Meditation. It might be asked, why is a special time needed for this since we meditate already during the common devotions? This is the answer. The period of personal meditation is to be devoted to the scriptures, private prayer and intercession, and it has no other purpose. There is no occasion here for spiritual experiments. But for these three things there must be time, for God himself requires them of us. Even if initially meditation means nothing but this one thing, that we are performing a service that we owe to God, it would still be sufficient. The time of meditation does not let us down into the void and abyss of loneliness. It lets us be alone with the Word, and in so doing it gives us solid ground on which to stand and clear directions as to the steps we must take. Whereas in our devotions together we read long consecutive passages, in our personal meditation we confine ourselves to a brief selected text which possibly may not be changed for a whole week. If in our reading of the scriptures together we are led into the whole length and breadth of the Bible, here we go into the unfathomable depths of a particular sentence and word. Both are equally necessary, that ye may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. Ephesians 3.18 In our meditation, we ponder the chosen text on the strength of the promise that it has something utterly personal to say to us for this day and for our Christian life, that it is not only God's word for the church, but also God's word for us individually. We expose ourselves to the specific word until it addresses us personally. And when we do this, we are doing no more than the simplest, untutored Christian does every day. We read God's word as God's word for us. We do not ask what this text has to say to other people. For the preacher, this means that he will not ask how he is going to preach or teach on this text, but what it is saying quite directly to him. It is true that to do this we must first have understood the content of the verse, but here we are not expounding it or preparing a sermon or conducting Bible study of any kind. We are, rather, waiting for God's word to us. It is not a vacuous waiting, but a waiting on the basis of a clear promise. Often we are so burdened and overwhelmed with other thoughts, images, and concerns that it may take a long time before God's word has swept all else aside and come through. But it will surely come, just as surely as God himself has come to men and will come again. This is the very reason why we begin our meditation with the prayer that God may send his Holy Spirit to us through his word and reveal his word to us and enlighten us. It is not necessary that we should get through the entire passage in one meditation. Often we shall have to stop with one sentence or even one word because we have been gripped and arrested and cannot evade it any longer. Is not the word Father or Love, Mercy, Cross, Sanctification, Resurrection often enough to fill far more than the brief period we have at our disposal? It is not necessary, therefore, that we should be concerned in our meditation to express our thought and prayer in words. Unphrased thought and prayer, which issues only from our hearing, may often be more beneficial. It is not necessary that we should discover new ideas in our meditation. Often this only diverts us and feeds our vanity. It is sufficient if the word, as we read and understand it, penetrates and dwells within us. As Mary pondered in her heart the things that were told by the shepherds, as what we have casually overheard follows us for a long time, sticks in our mind, occupies, disturbs, or delights us without our ability to do anything about it, so in meditation God's Word seeks to enter in and remain with us. It strives to stir us, 
to work and operate in us, so that we shall not get away from it the whole day long. Then it will do its work in us, often without our being conscious of it. Above all, it is not necessary that we should have any unexpected, extraordinary experiences in meditation. This can happen, but if it does not, it is not a sign that the meditation period has been useless. Not only at the beginning, but repeatedly, there will be times when we feel a great spiritual dryness and apathy, an aversion, even an inability to meditate. We dare not be balked by such experiences. Above all, we must not allow them to keep us from adhering to our meditation period with great patience and fidelity. It is, therefore, not good for us to take too seriously the many untoward experiences we have with ourselves in meditation. It is here that our old vanity and our illicit claims upon God may creep in by a pious detour, as if it were our right to have nothing but elevating and fruitful experiences, and as if the discovery of our own inner poverty were quite below our dignity. With that attitude, we shall make no progress. Impatience and self-reproach will only foster our complacency and entangle us ever more deeply in the net of self-centered introspection. But there is no more time for such morbidity in meditation than there is in the Christian life as a whole. We must center our attention on the Word alone and leave consequences to its action. For may it not be that God himself sends us these hours of reproof and dryness, that we may be brought again to expect everything from his word? Seek God, not happiness. This is the fundamental rule of all meditation. If you seek God alone, you will gain happiness. That is its promise.